Section 34, Confined Space Entry, Non-Marine Facilities. This slide shows an example of several confined spaces, a trench or a lock. Examples of confined spaces include such things as tanks, manholes, boilers, furnaces, sewers, silos, hoppers, vaults, pipes, trenches, tunnels, ducts, bins, and pits. Confined space safety. Confined space work performed in permanent fixed facilities and are performed on construction sites shall be performed in accordance with EM385 section 34, 29 CFR 1910.146, permit required confined spaces, and ANSI Z117.1 safety requirements for confined spaces. What is a confined space? A confined space is a space that is large enough and so configured that an employee can enter bodily and perform work and has limited or restricted means of entry or exit and is not designed for continuous worker occupancy. There are two classifications for all confined spaces, permit required confined space and non-permit required confined space. What is a permit required confined space? A confined space that has one or more of the following. Contains or has the potential to contain a hazardous atmosphere or contains a material that has the potential for engulfing an entrance or has an internal configuration such that an entrance could be trapped or asphyxiated by inwardly converging walls or by a floor that slopes downward and tapers to a smaller cross section or contains any other recognized serious safety or health hazard. Permit required confined space. Common acronyms for confined spaces, CS, confined space, CPCS, competent person, confined space, CPCSSV, competent person, confined spaces in ships and vessels, PRCS, Permit Required Confined Space, NPRCS, Non-Permit Required Confined Space. Definitions. An oxygen deficient atmosphere is an atmosphere with an oxygen content below 19.5% by volume. An oxygen enriched atmosphere is an atmosphere containing more than 23.5% oxygen by volume. An att attendant. An individual stationed outside the PRCS who monitors the entrance and performs attendance duties assigned in the employer's permit required confined space program. Authorized entrant. An employee who is authorized by the employer to enter a permit required confined space. Entry supervisor. A person responsible for determining if acceptable entry conditions are present authorizes entry and oversees entry operations and terminates entry as required. On construction sites and or during O&M activities, all fixed permit required confined spaces should be labeled as a danger. Permit required confined spaces that are created as part of construction work should be labeled and have a barrier to restrict entry. Confined space identification, facilities and job sites shall assign a safety supervisor or confined space competent person to identify all confined spaces and determine entry rules and requirements. This is shown in figure 34-1. This flowchart shows how to identify confined spaces and determine the various requirements needed for entry. Emergency responders. The confined space competent person shall coordinate with local emergency responders to determine if they are capable of a timely, within five minutes, rescue from the specific confined space. If the local emergency responders do not have the appropriate rescue capability, the rescue capability should be developed on site. End of task review. At the end of the work task where a permit required confined space was entered, 
There shall be an after action review by all parties on the procedures used and if improvement can be gained. For U.S. Army Corps of Engineer operations, this review should include safety personnel for the site and any security or emergency responders. For contract operations, this review should include the government designated authority and any security or emergency responders on site. Some of the potential hazards in confined spaces. Oxygen deficiency less than 19.5% or greater than 23.5%. Combustibles such as methane, hydrogen, acetylene, propane, gasoline fumes, toxic materials such as carbon monoxide, hydrogen sulfide, welding fumes or corrosives, electricity, steam, mechanical hazards such as mixers or crushers. Non-permit required confined space. These have been proven to have no potential for any hazardous atmosphere. They have no potential to contain any hazards capable of causing death or serious physical harm. An example of a non-permit required confined space is a trench greater than four feet deep with no utility lines and the atmosphere has been tested and the LEL readings and O2 level readings are acceptable and there is no gas powered equipment in the trench. Immediately dangerous to life and health or IDLH. An IDLH respiratory hazard is an atmosphere that poses an immediate threat to life, would cause irreversible adverse health effects, or would impair an individual's ability to escape from a dangerous atmosphere. Per OSHA 29 CFR 1910.146, immediately dangerous to life or health indicates any condition that poses an immediate or delayed threat to life or would cause irreversible adverse health effects or would interfere with an individual's ability to escape unaided from a permit space. Responsible person. Permit required confined space permit. The confined space competent person shall complete or review and sign the completed permit required confined space permit. Figure 34-2 shows a non-mandatory example. At a minimum, the entry log or form shall have the time and date monitoring device type, model, serial number, and a calibration date and the name of the individual doing the testing, and shall be responsible for enforcing the use of the permit required confined space permits for entry into all permit required confined spaces at the facility or site. All permits shall be signed by each employee entering the confined space, the confined space competent person, attendant, and a responsible entry supervisor. Entry into confined spaces. Entry is the act by which a person intentionally passes through an opening into a permit required confined space. Any part of the body passing through the opening is considered entry. Confined space team members. Entrant responsibilities. To ensure that the space has been adequately ventilated, isolated, emptied, or otherwise made safe for entry to immediately exit a space without question upon word of the attendant, no matter what the reason, to follow all safety rules and procedures that apply to the job, to be familiar with the work to be performed and the procedures that apply to the job, to use the appropriate PPE whenever necessary. Summary of the entrant responsibilities. Their major responsibilities are know the hazards, properly use the equipment, communicate with the attendant, and evacuate the permit required confined space if necessary or when directed. Attendant responsibilities. To monitor entrants during the job and during entry and exit to help ensure their safety. The attendant may not abandon his post for any reason while personnel are in the space unless relieved by another qualified attendant to monitor atmospheric conditions in the space prior to and during entry, to control access to the confined space, to summon emergency assistance as needed, to assess hazards in and around the space and take action on the same, to keep records of confined space work such as air test results, 
personnel entry or exit, etc. Supervisor responsibilities. To assure adequate protection is provided to the entrance by verifying adequate lockout tagout and that all hazards are securely isolated. To support the attendance authority in controlling access to a confined space. To verify that all personnel have exited prior to closing the space. To assure that all personnel involved are aware of the hazards associated with the space. To assure that rescue services are available prior to entry. Contractor responsibilities. If an injured entrant is exposed to a substance that requires a MSDS or other written information kept at the worksite, the MSDS or written information shall be made available to the medical facility treating the exposed entrant. Permit required confined space training requirements. Employee training. All employees entering permit required confined spaces or non-permit required confined spaces authorized attendants, supervisors, and managers, and workers within visual contact of the confined space shall be trained to understand the requirements of the facility or site-specific confined space entry program and procedures and emergency retrieval procedures. Initial confined space training. All entrants, authorized attendants, and supervisors or managers shall receive an initial confined space training course that includes hands-on practical exercise with all the equipment, rescue exercise, and completing the confined space permit. The training shall include, as a minimum, the roles and responsibilities in conducting an entry, specialized training on the use, calibration, and maintenance of monitoring, communications, and retrieval equipment, the hazards of the entry, and the control of the hazards of the entry. Permit required confined space entry steps. Isolate the space, ventilate the space, conduct a pre-entry meeting, complete the permit, test the atmosphere, then enter the space. Note, all vertical permit required confined spaces shall have a mechanical retrieval device when five feet or deeper in depth. Methods to isolate the space from all hazards. Close valves, they shall either be double blocked and bled or blank flanged. Empty the space, depressurize, vent and drain. Lock out and tag out the equipment, such as electrical sources, rotating and reciprocating parts, and hazardous materials. Clean the residue from the space. Ventilate the space. Use mechanical ventilation, such as fans or air horns. Ventilate at the rate of at least four volumes per hour. Larger spaces may require more ventilation. Make sure the air supply is not contaminated. The ventilation air supply must be from fresh air, uncontaminated with flammables, toxins, or other items. Conduct a pre-entry briefing. The entire crew must attend, the attendants, the entrance, and the entry supervisor. Review hazards of entry and work. Review the PPE requirements. Review procedure for contacting rescue personnel. Verify that rescue is available. Complete the permit. Emergency rescue. Using an on-site rescue team, they shall have the same level of training as the entrance. Two members shall be trained in first aid and CPR. They will use all PPE and equipment necessary for the rescue. They shall practice rescues a minimum of once every 12 months. For off-site rescue teams, they shall be informed of all hazards in the space, and they shall have knowledge of when entrants are in and have left the space. Complete the entry permit form. Permits must be correctly and completely filled out prior to entry. No entry is allowed without a valid permit. When work is completed, the permit and pre-entry form are reviewed. Canceled permits must be kept on file for at least one year. Test the atmosphere. The atmosphere will be tested in this order. First, check for oxygen content before and continual checking while the entrant is in the permit required confined space. The oxygen level shall be at least 19.5% and less than 23.5%. 
Next, check for combustibles. They shall be less than 10% of the lower explosive limit. Last, check for toxic gases. The most common is carbon monoxide. Its permissible exposure limit is less than 35 parts per million or any other hazardous materials that could be expected in the space. Important notice, anytime a limit is exceeded, no matter what the reason, all personnel shall immediately exit the space and no others shall enter until atmospheric conditions are returned to safe levels. Testing procedures. Always test the air at various levels to be sure that the entire space is safe. Good air near the opening does not mean there is good air at the bottom. Enter the space and proceed with work. An attendant shall be posted at the entrance for the duration of the work. He or she shall be in constant communication with the entrance while the job is in progress. All entrants shall sign the log when entering the space and sign out when exiting. The attendant shall maintain the permit and log for the duration of the work. Contractor Confined Space Program Contractors must be informed of the hazards within the space. Contractors must follow their own established confined space entry procedure and use their own permit forms. Contractors must supply their own attendants. Contractors must supply their own air monitors. And the contractors must review entry after completion of the job.